The use of drones in the war in Ukraine is developing at an incredible rate. Every day, hundreds of drones fly in the skies above the front line, performing various tasks. At the same time, the former commander of the UAV battalion of the 3rd Separate Ebon Assault Brigade of Ukraine, Vadim Mazevich, in an interview with Newsweek during the Yalta European Strategy, said that the Ukrainian military does not have enough explosives for FPV drones. Some Ukrainian drone operators have begun collecting Russian shells that failed to explode to remove the explosives, he said. The task is dangerous. But Mazevich noted that the Ukrainian military needs communication systems for these drones, so we need explosives. At the same time, the commander of the drone unit of the 58th Ukrainian Brigade, Sergei Varakin, called this quite a long-standing problem. He noted that Ukrainian fighters cannibalized ammunition that did not explode in order to use it against the Russian occupiers. We have been short of explosives for a long time now. It is a big deficit and we need a lot of explosives. We need them in large quantities, Varakin emphasized in an interview with Newsweek. According to the military man, our country can produce many things because Ukrainians are more creative than Russians. What we need is the ability to produce, a place to produce it and, of course, funding. Varakin said. At the same time, Mazevich noted that funding will make it possible to develop various conceptual areas and not just production ones. Ukraine's drone operations on land, in the air and on the water are huge. Throughout the war, Kyiv has said its drone production is on the rise and new designs almost constantly debut on social media. In late July, a Kyiv defense official said Ukraine was able to produce more than 3 million drones each year, with this propped up by financial support from Ukraine's international backers. Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Umarov said in an interview with the Ukrainian media that Kyiv had developed a very thorough and extensive plan to lay out how Kyiv will produce drones, electronic warfare equipment and ground robots for the next three years. The problem, Kyiv officials stress, is funding. Ukraine's capability far outstrips the money being funneled into the more than 250 companies involved in drone production, said Alexander Kamishin, Ukraine's former strategic industries minister, who is overseeing Kyiv's defense industry. Russia's victory in the military operation is impossible without the destruction of all NATO forces on Ukrainian territory. This was stated in a conversation with Info24 by Russian military political scientist Alexander Perenziev. I think that the end of the special operation depends not on the change of the Kyiv regime and its leader, but on the change of the West's policy towards Russia. Only in this situation can we talk about the end of the conflict, he explained. The expert added that at the current stage, Russia is forced to use military force to force the West to change its attitude towards itself. Perenziev noted that in order to achieve victory in the special operation, the Russian military must destroy not only the armed forces of Ukraine, but also the forces of the North Atlantic Alliance, which are currently supporting the Ukrainian army in combat operations. NATO troops have been fighting for a long time as part of the Ukrainian armed forces, including Poles, Balts, French, Germans, Canadians, British and Americans. When we talk about the defeat of the Ukrainian armed forces, we mean the destruction of NATO troops that are on Ukrainian territory. This is what Russia's victory in the special military operation will consist of, the political scientist concluded. Recently, Russia's permanent representative to the UN, Vasily Nebenzia, stated at a Security Council meeting on Ukraine that Moscow would continue to conduct a military operation if the West did not allow the cancerous tumor in the form of the Kiev regime to be eliminated peacefully. The permanent representative expressed the opinion that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is trying to force Western countries to become direct participants in a military conflict with Russia. According to him, Ukraine, with its actions, wants to push the world into the abyss of World War III. Nebenzia described the UN Security Council meeting itself as a concert stage for Volodymyr Zelensky. At the same time, the permanent representative noted that Russia has always respected the Ukrainian people and considers them fraternal.
There needs to be a shift in the thinking of the UK population as people prepare for the growing threat from Russia to European security, retired Chief of the Defence Staff Sir Patrick Sanders has said. The UK armed forces lack the necessary scale, resilience and internal coherence to maintain a deterrent effect and respond effectively to sustained and intense combat, according to a report by the House of Lords Foreign Affairs and Defence Committee, The Telegraph reports. The report notes that all evidence points to the current size of the British Army being insufficient and questions whether the army is prepared for a possible war with Russia. The report aims to adopt the mindset of a nation under real threat, the media outlet reports. Patrick Sanders warned that the British would have to be called up for war if it began, as the army was too small. 72,500 men, the lowest level since Napoleon's time, journalists say. The text also states that the level of public awareness of the state of the UK's defence posture is disappointingly low. The report warns, the mindset of a nation under real threat is missing and there is an urgent need to invest in shaping public perceptions of the value of national security. A House of Lords Select Committee report, Ukraine, a wake-up call, said the full-scale war demonstrated the need to improve not only the nation's physical capabilities but also its resilience and psychological preparedness. It also criticised the alarmingly low understanding of the public's awareness of the true state of the UK's defence posture. The mindset of a nation under genuine threat is absent and there is an urgent need to invest in shaping how people perceive the value of defence. It warned, it called on Keir Starmer to develop a plan that resonates with citizens, emphasising the importance of national security in their daily lives and moving beyond the notion that defence is solely the military's responsibility. The media reports that Britain may adopt the total defence concept of Sweden and Finland where any discussion of war is seen as a matter for the whole of society and involves all sectors of government, the economy and the civilian population in defence planning.